when I was studying in the seminary, uh, we have this uh, homiletics. So it's about learning how to give homilies. And uh, I remember when I studied that class, I was so nervous because the, my professor there uh, was a, a lay evangelist in South America. And he's a great preacher. And he was really encouraging us to be great preachers too. And I was like experiencing acid reflux in my stomach because of great nervousness, like, oh my goodness, I think I'm gonna fail in this class. <laughs> so he taught, he, he taught us like, you know, how, how, to, how to give a, a, a very good homily. And, and I remember, uh, I remember what he said there, what, what, what he said there that when you give a homily, make sure that you have a very clear main point, okay? So, you know, uh, so the, 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 sorry. So what's, the, what's, the, what's in the main point, right? And, uh, and so in that one main point, it could be an application, an insight, or a principle that you could share with people. And two questions that you could ask, uh, you know, uh, for you to answer so that people would know what, what is your main point is that what is the one thing I want my audience to know? And what do I want them to do? Okay, so for that, you know, uh, if you're able to answer that, you've come with your main point. Because I don't know if you've experienced this, wherein you attended a mass, you, you heard the homily, and the priest said so many things, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, and then you go out and you don't remember what he said. H have you experienced that? Have you experienced that? I hope you're not experiencing that here at St. Mary's. <laughs> I think we need to get better in our home this year. So we're, we're doing our best. I, I'm, I'm a work in progress, okay? I'm not saying that, you know, I, I'm already good. So I'm still learning. Because the public speaking is an art. So you, you, could, you, you could really get better uh, each time. So, so what is the main thing? So that's, 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 that's the, the thing that we have to, to know, right? And uh, in, in the law of, of the, 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 the Jews or the Israelites, they have 613 laws aside from the Ten Commandments. Purification law, law about this, law about tithing, law about that. 613 Imagine, like, for them to remember 613 laws. For me, the Ten Commandments, sometimes uh, I couldn't remember, like, all the Ten Commandments. What, what more? 613. That's why in, in our gospel today, there's one lawyer who's a Pharisee asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? What he's saying is that, give me one commandment that summarizes everything, that's easy to remember. Okay, and, and so what did Jesus say? Jesus says, you know, the first and the greatest is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is love yourself, love others as you love yourself. Now, that's easy to remember, right? Two commandments rather than 613. And so, so it's, it's easy to remember. I, I, I'm not saying it's easy to how many of you are having a hard time following those two great commandments? Good. For those who are raise, not raising their hands, I need to talk to you and maybe and, and get to know why, you know, how, how you're doing it, that it's easy for you to, to follow the two great commandments. Uh, I was talking to somebody. This, this person is a practicing Catholic. His family is practicing Catholic. And yet, he was telling me that he's struggling to obey the two greatest commandments. Right? And, uh, and he, he was sharing to me that he's kind of attached to his hobbies. He's putting his hobbies over God. Okay? And, uh, and, and I was, I, I, I was kind of telling him that, um, you know, the, the Lord loves you and meets you where you're at. Okay? But when, when you are putting your hobby over God, it means that you see your hobby more valuable than God, right? So, so for the thing for the thing for you to let go to detach yourselves from your hobby, is that for you to see that God is more valuable than your hobby. Okay, 
And you know, you could replace hobby with addiction. You could replace hobby with sin. You could replace any, any person, anything, anything that you put over God. So the key there is really seeing, it's like, it's like um, you, you know, in, in Scripture, there's one there who's, uh, who was searching for the pearl of great price, right? When he found that pearl of great price, he sold everything and he bought that land with the pearl of great price there. So it's a journey of searching for that pearl of great price. Because, you know, for us to put God, for us to be able to do these two greatest commandments, we need to go to the source of love, okay? And, and, and so who's the source of love? You know, I, I usually use this uh, illustration of um, a car running low with gas, okay? So you have two options, right? You continue driving until you run out of gas and you could no longer drive anymore. Or the other option is that you go to a gasoline station and fill up the gas tank. And that's the same. God is a source of love. Okay? And in fact, Jesus said in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, is less, we love because he first loved us. For us to be able to fulfill the two greatest commandments is that for us to experience that love first in our life so that we will be able to love him in return. One symptom of your running low, running empty with that love in your life is that, you know, when you're, when you're impatient, when you're attached to things, when you're resentful, when you're fearful, when you're envious, when you're experiencing jealousy, all this are the symptom that you are running low in that love. It's an invitation by, the, by God that you go to Him and experience His love for you. As we experience that love, His love in our life, the more that we will be able to love Him and the more that we will be able to love others. That love that we experience from Him would overflow and others will be a recipient of that love. Now, G Jesus said there, these this two greatest commandments is where all the law and the prophet hang on it. And when we're talking about law, Moses represents the law, and Elijah represents the prophets. And it reminds us of what happened in Transfiguration, right? When Jesus was in Mount Tabor, he was talking to both Elijah and Moses and what he's saying there is that I I am the fulfillment of the law and the prophet because Jesus is love okay and Jesus is gonna help us fulfill those two greatest commandments and the reason why the two greatest commandments is very important is because it's the foundation of our Christian life I don't know uh, for those I, I'm sure you, you're familiar with, with, with buildings, right? Building a house, building a cottage, building whatever. You need to form, you need to build a, a, a foundation. Now, if the, the, the foundation is poor or faulty, what will happen is that it will collapse. When there's an earthquake, when there's calamity, that building, that house will collapse. That's why you need to have a strong foundation. And the two greatest commandments is the foundation of your spiritual life. Here at St. Mary's, we talk about the life of the disciple. Remember this? Love, love, give, grow, go. Re remember this, okay? So this is the life of the disciple. And as you see there in the, in the diagram, the, a tree diagram, the roots are the two loves. Love of God with all your heart, mind, and soul and the love of neighbor, right? Those are the two roots that the tree should be planted. And then you will see the branches. The branches are where it is the give, grow, and go. If you're not strong, if your foundation is not strong, 
you will not give, you will not grow, and you will not go. Because the root is not strong enough. Okay? So the first one is give, right? If you experience the love of God in your life, how he gave himself freely to die in your place out of his great love for you, you want to give yourself back to him in return. That's where you, where you will give, you know, your, your time, talent, and treasure out of love for him and out of love for others and for the advancement of God's call for us to do the mission that he called us to do. Okay? So give. Now, the other one is grow. What's, what's, what's in the grow? Okay? In grow is, you know, uh, when, when, when we experience the love of God in our life, we want more. We can't settle for, for anything less. We want to grow. To grow what? To grow in love. To grow in holiness. To grow in life in the Spirit. To grow in becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. So that's the grow. What's the other one? The, th the third one is the go. When you experience the love of God in your life, it will impel you. There's a force that will impel you to share that love to others. The, the, the reason why we're having a hard time sharing that love to others is maybe you haven't really experienced that love in your life. You can't share what you don't have. That's why it's very important, you know, uh, that we are deeply rooted and our, our roots are, are, are founded in these two great commandments of loving God and loving others. You know, uh, in, in, uh, along Somerset Street, there's, there's a, a, a very, uh, a very good Chinese restaurant there, dim sum. I like eating dim sum. So I went there, I, I tried the dim sum there, it was great. And you know, after eating that in that, in that dim sum restaurant, I can't help but share that to others. Hey, if you want to go dim sum, that's the best restaurant to go to. It, it's the same, right? It's the same maybe you've seen a, a, a very good movie or, or, uh, or you've read a very good book. You can't help but share it to others. Read this book, watch this movie. Watch this TV show. Eat in this restaurant. It's the same thing. That's why we, we have, we need to experience the love of God in our life. And that love will impel us to share that love to others. That's from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, where it says, For the love of Christ impels us. Impels us to share that love. You know, what, what we receive, we want others to experience it too. Okay, so that's why it's, it's, it's really very important. So what's the, what's the main point, one main point of my homily? I hope, I hope you were able to get it, right? It's building, build a strong foundation based on the two loves so that we could give, grow, and go as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Because why we need to do this? Because St. John of the Cross once said this, in the evening of life, we will be judged on love alone. 